You said part. Remember, a part is less than the whole. Um, I wouldn't say in the way that I'm talking about it. That, that would be so in what way I, I, you're saying I, I it's say, a part? I say Jesus is a part of God as in we cannot see the Father. If we were to see the Father, we would all perish right now because he's so holy and mighty. So God had to come down. And when you say God, will, you mean the Father himself. has to come down? No, I'm saying God. This is because this is where you're kind of straw manning the Trinity. Okay, now. explain, explain. Let me explain. So when God comes down, he must veil himself. How does he veil himself? Well, he veils himself with flesh, the flesh of Christ. And that is what we believe. So when I'm saying a part, I'm merely saying, just like in, uh, I don't know where it says, um, forgive me, but it says that Allah veiled himself. It's the exact same concept. We believe that Yahweh veiled himself in the form of Christ and that his spirit, the Holy Spirit, is the way he moves in the world and in the heavens, etc. So what's the difference between the Father and the Son in your concept of God? The difference between the Father and the Son? Um, the Father is unseen and the Son is the seen image of the unseen God, the Father. So when there was no creation, did the Son exist? The Son of God exists? There's no creation, yes. He did. He's uh, eternal, yes. Right. So let's leave creation aside. So let's leave creation aside. So you have the God existing as Father and Son. What's the difference between them? Um, the Son is uh, just like I explained. The flesh. Um, there is no flesh. Remember, God, there's no God creation. The We're talking about pre-creation, pre-incarnation. Uh, I don't have the knowledge to tell you about that. I, I don't have that kind of. But they exist. So they yes, must exist. I don't know how, but I. As okay. Far as I'm aware Do they talk to each other? Uh, yeah, they do communicate. Right. So they're not the same thing, they're distinct from each other. Uh, as far as I'm aware, yes. Yeah. So when they're distinct from each other, so each one, does each one possess fullness of divinity? Um, as far as I'm aware, yes. Yeah? From my knowledge right now, someone else may correct me. Sure, sure, sure. So from what you understand, each one possesses fullness of divinity. So by themselves, okay. Is the Father in any way, shape or form dependent on the Son of God? One more time, sir. Is the Father God yeah. in any way, shape or form dependent on the Son of God? Uh, not that I'm aware of, no. How about the Son? Is he dependent on the Father? Uh, his fleshly nature, yes. Not flesh. That's, We're that's talking about pre-incarnation. Um, Pre-incarnation, I'd say no, he's not dependent on the Father. But when he came to earth in the flesh, I'd say he was dependent on the Father because he limited himself and therefore he depended on the Father, for example, when he cried out um, at many different verses, you, you would probably know. Yeah. Sure. So if we were to just talk about your concept of God pre-creation, pre-incarnation. Pre I don't have the knowledge to speak about but, but, but the Bible does talk about God, right? In the Garden of Eden uh, and yeah. even before, yeah, 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 God yeah. must have spoken to the prophets. Yeah. So, clarify to me um, from what you know, does the Son also possess a will and the Father of God also possess a will? They, all three persons of the Trinity possess their own will, however they all are, um, what's the word, coherent with each other? In agreement with each In other? In agreement with each okay. other, yeah, yeah. Is this agreement by choice or by compulsion? Uh, Were they forced to agree? Um, they weren't forced to agree. No. So they choose to agree? Uh, I would say they chose to agree, but I think that God is so divine, none of his attributes are going to contradict each other. Okay, I'm going to give you an example. Yeah. So if they choose to agree, then there's a possibility and potentiality they can choose to disagree because they are independent of each other, as you said. But that's just like saying, can God create a rock that is so heavy you can't No, it? no, 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 no. no. That, that, is, that is not even a question. It's a rhetorical statement. I'm not going to bring anything like that. No, but that's the exact same thing. That's the exact no. same concept because it would be uh, contrary to God's nature to then contradict himself. So that, why would you okay. do that? So let me give you an example. You see the bottle you're carrying? Yes. To open the lid or not to open the lid? Can the sun with his power open the lid if he wants to, when it's closed? Uh, can the sun with his power open the lid? Yes. Yeah, of course. He's all powerful. Of course, yeah. At the same time, can the Father keep it closed? Does, like he have the said, Does he have the power to do that, is the question. Um, once again, I'll refer you back to can God create something so heavy you can't look. It's no, as simple as that. I'll tell you why it's, it's not. No, no, no. Okay, tell me why it's I'll not. I'll tell you it's not. Tell me why it's not. 
can someone create something is the questioning about the ability to create. Do you have the ability and power to create? And at the same time, not able to lift means not having the ability. So on the same question you are saying, does God have the ability and not have the ability? That's a contradiction. That's why it's not a question. A question to be valid, it has to be free from internal contradiction. The question you're asking about, can God create a stone so heavy that he cannot lift it? It's invalid question because it carries within it a contradiction. The example I'm offering is about two distinct entities. That's all one. That's all one. That's where you're. That's when where you you're, say. That's where you're. When you say. Because they are one. When you say they're one, one what? Um, one godhead. One godhead. Yes. Individually, they have their choice. They have their will. They have their power, and they have the fullness of divinity. So, if one of them wants to open the lid, yeah. has the ability to do so. We are questioning about someone's ability to carry out what they want. If the sun is all powerful, the sun should be able to open the lid of that bottle. It's all powerful. If he wants to, he should be able to. That's the want. No. Let me let me elaborate a bit more. If the sun himself wants to open it, should be able to to go along with the want with the ability. So not only has the ability and the want, they synchronize. Yes, able to. The father also has the ability to keep it closed. And if the father wants to, because his want is his wishes. His wishes. So can he want to keep it closed and having the ability? You're saying he cannot. That means he cannot want something when he wants to. This is what you're not understanding. God is so divine. He's not going to make these contradictions. He's not, He's not contradicting to... anyone. He is simply He's not saying. He's going to overpower, not agree with him. Okay, we were talking about the wills of each part of the church. Overpower? Are you yeah. saying? Are you saying he doesn't have the power to do whatever he wants? That's not what I'm saying. Okay. Does the Father have I'm the power God is so divine, to keep? These elements are not going to overpower each other because God is divine there is no yeah. mistakes in him so how are those these elements at all going to do that so why can he not carry on to keep this lid closed if he so wanted and he has the power to do so you are saying he cannot do that so he's restricted he is limited by being restricted and limited he cannot be self-sufficient he cannot be sovereign is he sovereign you see, we had coronation recently, right? They, they call the sovereign king. So the king's will is come on, off with your head, and that's it. No one can stop you. That's what used to happen in England, right? Sovereignty means your will is command. You don't have to listen to anyone. You don't have to compromise. You have the ability. So I'm asking, is the father sovereign? Looks uh, yes, like... Of course he is. So, can he keep it closed if he wants to? Yes. Right. What's going to happen to this bottle? Is the lid going to be open or closed? It's going to be closed. But, but the son wanted it to be open. But the son would not contradict what the father wants. Is he sovereign, the son? Uh, I'd have to think about that more in depth because I wouldn't I yeah. give an answer. If he's sovereign, he should be able to open it. No. The son, the father and the Holy Spirit all have the same will. Their wills will not contradict one They don't have the same will. If you read the Bible, Jesus says, not according to my will, but, but according will to... So that means what? Yes. They have different will, and here Jesus is submitting to the will of a higher in his being. Flesh. Yes. In his flesh. But as you realize, they have two wills. He's not... What was the will of Christ in the Garden of Gethsemane? Um, to be saved or not to be saved? Uh, can, we, what, can you repeat the verse? Yeah. If you can. He says, let yeah. this cup be away from me. Not according to my will, but according to your will. What was the will of Christ? Uh, I do want to say something, but I don't want to be her heretical, sure. so I don't want to say it. Yeah. So, but I would say in another answer, um, another Christian that is more intelli sure. intelligent than me may correct me, but Fine. is that the flesh, um, because it is human flesh, just like if I, someone was to come and try and kill me now, I'd say, Lord, save me. That is my flesh speaking, but that is not Jesus' divine nature speaking. So 
How, how, really how do you know? Him. How do you know it's not the divine nature speaking? Uh, because how many will speaking. did? How many will did Jesus Christ, the person, have? One or two? Uh, I, once again, I would have to bring a. If you have two wills, you are saying the divine will and the human will contradict with each other. Or you have possibilities, isn't it? If you have one will, is that an amalgamation of the divine and the human, or is it? What is amalgamation? Mean, sorry? A composite. Okay. Because if you have a divine will, that will existed before the flesh. So when you have a flesh, what happened to the divine will? Did it get left aside or did it override the human will? Because a human can only be human with a human will. If you don't have a will, you're not even a human. Yeah, I'm not too sure. I, I wouldn't be able to give you an answer. Yeah, so that's why we go back pre-incarnation. If you have Christ, the second member of the Trinity, if he is sovereign, it means he doesn't have to listen to anyone. He can open it. The fact that he has to restrict his want and not open it means he's not sovereign. Either way, you cannot have two sovereignty. So if I was to say that uh, Christ was not sovereign and he was submissive to the Father, what would you do? Then he's not God, because only God can be sovereign. Anyone to be called God, one of the essential, essential characteristics or attribute has to be sovereignty, self-sufficiency, independency. Okay, I understand. That. So that yeah? makes him a prophet. Yeah. So that's why we're saying the Christians, they need to think again.